whenever I get into weird situations, I just try to envisage myself explaining it to my dad. So dad, just to recap, worst slum in history, heroin, hookers, white, fat men, he probably... And to make things even freakier, as we're pulling out of West Point, Rambo texts Miles and says, not only does Butt Naked want to do the interview, but that he's waiting at our hotel for us. Yeah, now we're going back to sanity. <laughs> to hang out with an ex-cannibal, all-time murderer, who's now staying in our hotel and decided not to leave. Because <laughs> if we're there, we're supposed to hang out. <laughs> Meanwhile, he knows I have tons of money. <laughs> and he's on the run because people want to kill him. Should I just leave my door open, General? <laughs> do you want to come in? mentioned about sacrifices. Can you give us maybe an estimate of how many civilians you think lost their lives when your group was fighting war as a direct result? It should not be less than 20,000. Now we are very nervous to meet General Butt Naked, and he's very nervous to meet us because he's had several assassination attempts against him and he wants to meet us and vet us before he'll okay an interview. <laughs> When we told him about our escape from West Point that night, he laughed and he seemed to ease up. And after that, he asked for a phone, he called Rambo, and it was on. But you became confronted, right? Yes, sir. Are you the same Joshua Bly now who they call Evangelist Bly? Yeah. We asked the general, now known as Joshua Blahi, why people were trying to kill him, and he told us that it was because he had been recently pardoned for his war crimes. And when we asked how he got pardoned, he told us it was his conversion to Christ and his becoming a man of God. Because when I got convicted, it was a household news. Everybody in Liberia, ah, General Bodnicki got convicted all over Africa. Because the first question people ask me, they say, Joshua, don't you think uh, you decide to be Christian so that you can escape persecution? And I said, no. Because I could have gone back. I could have gone back. Several times I was attacked. And I told them, if anybody wants to kill me, you only kill me because two years ago I fought you, or you don't like what I'm preaching, but I cannot go back to my vomit. I have left the war, and whew, it was all over. So we talked with Joshua late into the night until he told us to get to bed because the next day he was going to show us his Liberia. So in the morning, Joshua Blahi took us out and the first stop was the area within Monrovia that he used to control during the war. So this was my, this was my control, control area. And who, who would be attacking? Charles Taylor, men, NPF, they were calling themselves government forces at the time. Right here, this is where I have my crutch, my crutch chair. Yeah. I sat in the chair. My boys are all around yeah. singing. The, the, the elders bring the an innocent child yeah. and we open the back of the child, thrust out the heart. Alive. Yes. And we cut it to pieces and dis distribute it to the boys. And what does so that do? Just make them brave and charge them for the battle with the belief that bullet will not get protect them. us or get them. This last thing was still on my hand mm. when my boys went for water. Just before they got back, and I heard a voice behind me, my son, why are you sleeping? But this was in my dialect. Mm. I said, Andrew, there came you when. To look back, I saw this man in Lini, white Lini, but the light radiated through that, through that man mm. was so bright and brighter than the sun. Mm. And then I thought I was not a slave because he said, my son, why are you slaving? Mm. I said, well, in this whole territory, I'm the king. Mm. I'm supposed to be a king. And he said, you rightly say you're supposed to be a king, but you're living like a slave. Mm. And those words were very hard words in my dialect. Mm. I said, I don't understand. What did he say? I mean, repent and live or refuse and die. Mm. And he vanished. And the light vanished. Mm. And I came up to myself and I was so confused. Now, to go for battle, I tried to signal the battle. My pistol got bust. I got so afraid and retreated from the front. Mm. But I got afraid for the first time. The next stop was the place where there had been an assassination attempt 
on Joshua's life just the day before. Come, you can make it. Come, come and see. They bring bug juice. Nobody brought bug juice. I would have taken you, but my back. No, 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 it's okay. Well, I don't mind getting wet. <laughs> it's safe. It's, they drink this, people drink this water. <laughs> yeah. About a million people in Africa die every year from malaria, and malaria thrives in swamps exactly like this. It's a very smoochly on my moochly. Thanks. Good. Some worm's gonna go in my foot <laughs> and I'm gonna get a filthy little tumor. <laughs> Hello. Hello. This is what all fear stems from. <laughs> like, you know, so these were some of the boys that you fought with before yeah, or no? Yeah, brought, yeah, some of them have fought, some of them fought on me. That is the, the fighters who used to fight naked. Yeah. Uh, so is that why your nickname was General Butt Naked? Yes, because I was naked, because I fought naked. Yeah. A lot of people would drink or do drugs before fighting? Yeah, most of my boys, Yeah. then we drain the blood from the innocent child and drink it before going to battle. So you kill the, the child? Yes. And then drink the blood? Yeah, okay. And then, why would you fight naked? It was believed, once I'm naked, no bullet can affect me. Once I'm naked, I could disappear. This is his mission that they're building. They're singing now. Welcome to our home. Thank you. <laughs> Mustafa was, uh, was one of the generals who fought for Charles Taylor. So you fought for Charles Taylor and... I fought for uh, Johnson. 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 So you, you were enemies before? Yeah, we were enemies. Yeah. I was 16 at that time. When they initiated me as Charles Taylor, I left with them until I became Take Commander. Mm -hmm. After the war, we become parentless, friendless. Nobody wants to use it at all because you are fighting war. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We end up in the street. I was in a gray yard, I used to smoke drugs, taking drugs, sleeping on the street. And then I knew he, when he was born naked, I was fighting against him. When I saw him, he was already pastor. He took her to the church. From the church, continually, he did manage him all until today, you see us. We were children and they damaged our life. It is simple that in Kudo in the world, we were fighting. We were fighting, they didn't even get time for us. By, by the grace of God, I tried to run away from it before, and I saw that running away could not help me. Mm. My daughter was walking one day, Michaela, when she was a baby, a more baby, and somebody told her, you bought naked daughter. And she started crying. Mm. She never knew who bought naked was. Mm -hmm. See, somebody said, I bought naked daughter. Because of that, I tried to run away with her, mm -hmm. also live far. But then, one day, she will have to go home. Mm -hmm. So since there is still time, Go back and see how you can repair some of those things. Mm -hmm. Time will come and somebody will tell her what Bud Naked did. Mm -hmm. And then she will have the opportunity to tell them what Joshua Bly did. Mm -hmm. So there will be monument built for him, memorial that she can be proud of. So that is how I take the challenge. You can make the change. You can make the difference. Where are we right now? Uh, this is the... St. John Monovia uh, Cemetery. Cemetery. After the war, the ex-combatants went into crime and they were looking for hide-up. Nowhere for them to stay. So this is the cemetery where after the war, there was nowhere to live. So the people would come in, empty out the graves, and live in the graves. 
and maybe up to about 4,000 people lived in the graves. See all these are empty. It's a very heavy vibe, yeah. empty graves everywhere. We were just at lunch, we were talking about, we, we ordered some ribs and uh, you said, no, I don't like to eat uh, flesh. flesh. And I said, why don't you like to eat flesh? And you told me the story about coming back from Nigeria. Could you tell us that story? Specifically one time, I was very hungry and I saw the only thing was around was sticks, dry meat. When I took the first bite, I noticed it was, it was hema, hema flesh. Yeah. So I wash up the pepper to be very sure, wash up the pepper from it to get a taste. And I got a taste, it was him on an alarm, and police came and arrested the guy. And I told them, well, I was one of the generals in Liberia, and this is my name, and uh, this is what we did to eat. Uh, I ate it several times before, though I'm converted now. You ate human flesh? Yeah, a lot of times, so they discovered, so uh, they saw the pictures, and they went to the internet, and they knew that, okay, it's truth. Yeah. What would you eat? Uh, some people eat the heart. Yeah. Now, for hunger, People eat around here, yeah. and you know, because it's soft or it's quick to don't. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. We're talking about eating human flesh in a graveyard. It's a bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we can go. I want to eat some African stuff. The fear of white in the world. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. This morning we are going to pray for the new seven of God. some dangerous cause but people have been threatening me and why they try to kill me is what I want to make meaning about today I am an old sinner I was about the age of 11 and was initiated as a priest to my tribe I did a lot of human sacrifices killed a lot of innocent people now I know I was wrong but thank God that extended his mercy to me through Jesus Christ. 
The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 28, he said, all things, all single things, not some things, but every single thing works together for good. But one thing I am sure of, I am convinced that I'm called by God's own purpose. And once you are called by God's purpose, the Bible says all things work together for good. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Liberia on the one hand is more crime and poverty and rape and cannibalism than you've ever seen. But on the other, it's also got a church on every street corner. Every car has a religious slogan. They have huge revivals with tens of thousands of worshippers. It's some sort of weird heaven and hell scenario. With Joshua, I started to get a bit of Stockholm Syndrome because he's charming, the churches are nice, there's not as much danger, and I started to like him. But as he was preaching, I thought to myself, this guy's killed tens of thousands of people. In fact, he's probably killed the relatives of the people in the church worshipping and adoring him now. And I'm thinking to myself, what the fuck is going on? This morning, I want to preach on a theme. Effective generational transfer. Before that, I want to introduce one of my latest friends, <laughs> Shane, and a group that have interest in coming to Liberia to go to some dead areas, areas that people do not commonly go. And I thought they were not serious because there are some places that I go to evangelize, nobody want to go there with me. We reach to the water, to where my camp is, most of the time, if a guest comes who are not used to Liberia, they are afraid of the swamp, so we have to tow them. And these guys refuse to be towed. They walk in the water with us yesterday. <laughs> I was in a little doubt, but after a moment with them, I knew they were true friends. So I want to stick him in the corner this moment that he will say a few words, at least greet you. <laughs> I just want to say thank you for having me in your church. Uh, praise God. And I'd like to say uh, thank you to Joshua Blay for all the good work he's doing. And hopefully we can help. And hopefully we can show what we're doing here in Liberia, what you're doing in Liberia. And we can help make it better and bring some more awareness to what's happening here. Amen. I have to admit that when Joshua handed me the mic, I had no idea what I was saying. At that point in the trip, I felt like I was on acid. Believe me, the world is changing. What are you teaching your children? The war has come, it has passed. You will soon be old. 30, 40 years from now, you will soon be old. And you will pass. What are you leaving? as a principle for your children to follow. What? The whole world already know me as General Bodnicki or Killer, a rapist. But my children will know me as a man who stands for the truth. 
Am I talking to somebody? Before the future, according to morals, those reasons do not hold. I'm a murderer. I'm a blooded handed person. The world is changing. The mistakes of our fathers cause less of harm to the mistake that we make to our children. That is, if we feel them, stand to your feet. As I sat and listened to Joshua preach, I thought about the fact that the UN is leaving in less than a year. And Rambo had told us that the generals are ready to fight. They have the soldiers, they have the guns, and they're living in abject poverty. And I wondered if that happened, would Joshua stay with God, or would he return to being general butt naked? You can deliver your generation. You can deliver this nation. You can deliver your community. You can deliver your tribe. You can deliver this continent. Somebody shout glory. Let us pray.